Here's a review of the awesome Mazda CX-7 2011 edition. Uh, this thing has a turbo in it a little bit before its time. I like this car quite a lot and it reminds me of the Lexus NX 300 which is also a, a modern uh, turbocharged engine. But I'll see you guys on the other side of the intro. <laughs> Okay, so this 2011 Mazda CX-7, I like this car quite a bit. Um, I've always liked the styling of it, uh, but before I get too much into the styling, uh, this car debuted in April of 2006. It was a 2007 model. That's very early, to, now I'm thinking about it, it's very early to start a 2007 model back in April. Um, now this car was discontinued in 2012 because something called a CX-5 came out. And as you guys know, the CX-5 is a very, very well done vehicle. It's smaller on the outside, that, I'm talking about the CX-5. It's smaller on the outside of this vehicle, but it's bigger on the inside. Um, its performance is similar. That The CX-5 has better efficiency than this car with more cargo space. Um, but this car has something special underneath the hood. It has a 2.3 liter turbo four that you find in the Mazda Mazda Speed 3 hatchback. Okay, um, this particular one, since it's a 2011, it has the refresh styling as well as the um, updated interior, which is has an updated uh, speedometer as well as the, the little uh, navigation screen in there. And I say little, it is little, you'll see in a little bit. Um, but it did come with technology such as blind spot monitor and Bluetooth uh, starting in 2010. But let's get into the styling of this car. I think it looks great. Uh, you have the happy face here that you see sometimes um, in the Mazda Miata or CX-5 uh, for, for this generation of cars. Um, I think it looks really, really good. Uh, the headlights look fine. They are a little bit foggy, so they do fog up over time, but there's always ways you can clean that. I like the hood, it's pretty aggressive. And these wheel arches here on the side really remind me of the RX-8. So I think uh, they did a really good job in making this car look fairly aggressive for a crossover because it does perform pretty aggressive as well for a crossover, which I like quite a bit. I like the huge fog lamps down there as well. From the side here, there, there's the large wheel arches. And speaking of these wheels, they are freaking awesome. I love the style of these wheels. These are 19 inch wheels. They look huge on this car. Uh, and these tires, as you guys will find out, they need, <laughs> They need a little bit of help. They weren't giving me a whole lot of help when I was accelerating or braking, um, but especially when I was accelerating. They could, these are P235s by 55 by R19. So the, these are 19 inch wheels. We have all, of course, we, excuse me, we have four wheel disc brakes all the way around. And if you look at the side here, this is nicely engineered. So when you get into the car, you're not gonna get your pants dirty uh, because this is going to stay dry, all right? So very nicely done by Mazda. Looking at, I mean, you have a lot of chrome on this car, which I think it would look better if they just went without it, but it's a very unique window line. You kind of see it goes up with the rear wheel arches. Uh, it's very unique in that regard. Um, <clears throat> you have a nice little zoom zoom sticker stuck on there. I would leave it on there. Someone took off their Jesus fish, poor Jesus fish. And we have this awesome dual exhaust system here. So this car looks very aggressive from behind. It almost reminds me of a Porsche Cayenne. Call me crazy. Many of you guys think I am crazy as it is, but it looks like a, a mini Porsche Cayenne from behind. Um, I don't know how I feel about the taillights. They almost look a little over stylized, but I do like uh, the the rear stance of this vehicle. Uh, overall, this car looks extraordinary, especially with these wheels. Um, this particular car, uh, what is it called? It's the S Grand Touring, which is the top of the line. Unfortunately, this one does not have all wheel drive. Okay, so underneath the bonnet slash hood of this 2011 uh, turbocharged CX-7, uh, we got the MZR 2.3, D-I-S-I -I Turbo. So, you guys know I'm a big fan of, of companies putting their logo on the engine cover as well as exactly what the engine is. 
Uh, so A plus. Now, it's, of course, it's a little dirty, but once we get it through detail, it's going to look pretty good. Um, this battery's not looking so hot. Um, they're probably maybe this car. There may have been an original cover on that, but not that I know of. And of course, this engine produces 244 horsepower and it has the six-speed auto of course you can get it in all-wheel drive but this one is a front-wheel drive model only and you can see where it sucks in all the air uh, so this this right here sucks it through the grill so it's a it's effectively a ram ram air intake which is pretty cool uh, but nice job Mazda not only with the power of this vehicle as you guys will find out um, but with the engine presentation and the engine bay nice job Get on side the 2011 Mazda CX-7 before it rains on us. As you guys can see, it's starting to rain out there. <clears throat> first time in this vehicle, first thing that sticks out is the Bose upgraded audio system. I don't mind that. These seats <clears throat> are not holding up all that great. Um, now, this car is seven years old, has less than 50,000 miles, uh, but this is not the greatest leather I've ever seen in a car um, and I guess I'm a little bit spoiled uh, with Lexus but how does the seat feel it feels fine it feels fairly comfortable it is a little bit on the stiff end of things we have a hard touch plastic here leather here more leather here one touch auto on this button only um, over here is going to be ooh, you can have you can raise or lower your lights I don't think I've ever seen anything like that Blind spot monitor, which was new for the refreshed version of this uh, CX-7. Uh, TC TCS, uh, my guess would be traction control systems. Fuse box there, looking down you have an e-brake. Uh, there is your little gas cap. And then I'm sure your hood button is somewhere underneath there as well. Okay, so let's keep moving. Actually, let's get this car started up. It is a uh, push button start. Now, if you look at this, this is like a normal ignition where you would put a key in, but you push, twist. I actually like that quite a bit. It gives me, oh, oh gosh, slow down fans, slow down. Slow down volume. Okay. So it gives you the feel of a key, but you have the convenience of, you know, these key fobs and without, you know, extra keys on your key fob. So I really like that. That's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. So nice job Mazda for implementing that. Cruise controls here. So these gauge, gauges are brand new uh, for the refresh of the CX-7. Uh, you have the obviously the nice tachometer. Is cruise control on? I guess cruise control stays on when the car when the car is turned off. Uh, that's bizarre. I don't think I've seen that before. Um, but everything is, looks really, really cool, and, and I do like the colors with the, the deep purple as well as the bright red. So I like that <clears throat> quite a bit. It's different. It's neat. Uh, a lot of vents up front, which I'm happy about. I always want more vents in the front of the car. So we have these huge ones on the outside, and we have three in the middle, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, this is very plain looking, but it is it looks fairly functional. Here would be your presets for the, for your radio. Um, this is how you see, seek through your MP3 uh, CDs, right? Six disc in dash. That was that was a big thing back in the day. Um, lots of options up here, auxiliary. Now this car also does have Bluetooth, which was uh, something that was included on the refresh of this car. Um, navigation. Let's press navigation. Oh, I had to click down here to accept the warning on there. So this does have navigation. What do you guys think? Is that the smallest navigation screen ever invented in, uh, in, in every single vehicle of all time? That might just be the smallest navigation screen. I'm, I can't believe I'm seeing what I'm seeing. Guys, <clears throat> it's about the same width of this vent. Okay, let's see here. Reset averages. What else can I do? Preferences. Click down. Okay, I'm not going to mess with any of that. We're just going to go back to map. That is unbelievable. We can zoom in. Zoomed in all the way. Gosh, if you zoom out, you won't be able to see like anything, right? 
anyways uh, we have a night a nice repeater of the FM radio up here as well as your vent speed and all of your climate control information is going to be on the right side and it's that like old school bright red which I actually like quite a bit and it's repeated the same color as in um, the instrument cluster but I cannot I'm still can't get over this navigation um, it works everything on it's just really really tiny like that's one of the smallest clocks I've ever seen in a car but you know if you have not the greatest vision that's gonna be um, definitely a drawback uh, okay um, defrost here AC button climate controls right here um, so nothing out of the ordinary there we have a nice 12 volt a decent little um, <clears throat> Gosh, words are hard today. I think I've had too much caffeine. Uh, storage space here, two cup holders. We have heated seats. Oh, while we're on it, guys, these these are some of the nicest key fobs I've ever felt. I And they've held up really well over the time. So you have a panic button you can hold here, and then your unlock and lock. They just feel really high quality, and I like the structure of them. Um, it's almost like a stick of gum. That's what it reminds me of. It's a nice little stick of gum where so many people have these huge fat key fobs that, you know, feel like crap and they, they're like a brick. Um, <clears throat> glove box. Let's get in the glove box. Hey, it came with mymazda.com. A little, a little satchel there for your books. Flip that back up. Um, now you can lock this, this storage space here in the middle. It is a armrest as well and this leather is just not holding up very well over time unfortunately we're gonna flip this up pull open okay Ooh, we have another 12 volt there's your auxiliary input and then a great big storage area in there so they did a really good job with engineering this um, with a couple buckets in here as well as a 12 volt um, very very impressive with this center console uh, but let's go ahead and get in the back. I think that oh hold on. I always do this. Why do I suck? Okay, here is the vanity mirror Hair's a little bit crazy today. It's because I did it right after um, I got out of the shower, so it's a little bit spiky But hey if you flip this open we have an adjuster or and I should say an extender It's pretty fancy here are your lights uh, your sunroof, which I'm not gonna open uh, but it's fairly decent size for a vehicle of this size, uh, but let's go ahead and get in the back now First thing I noticed guys. There's not a lot of room back here now The front seat is not adjusted for me. I'm gonna move it forward Okay, that's fine. All right, so with the seats all the way back There's not a lot of leg room back here But with with it move forward and I'm gonna drive from that position more than likely it does give you a decent amount of legroom. Now there are no connections back here. There are no vents, which is very surprising. Maybe that's why they have the, that extra middle vent there to push air back this way. That is very bizarre. Uh, rear leather, again, like the front leather, you can see that spotting. Um, it's just not holding up as well as what I see sometimes in Lexus vehicles. A horizontal cup holder. Why wouldn't they just put it straight? Do you guys, do you guys have an answer for that? <clears throat> a horizontal, that's bizarre. Uh, but there's not hardly any creature comforts back here in the rear seat. Uh, this rear seat is not, let's see here, can I recline it? Nope, it is not reclinable, if that's a word. Uh, but let's go ahead and open up the rear hatch. Okay, looking inside, there's actually a really large amount of storage space in here. I almost wish they would have cut into this maybe a couple inches so you could have more rear leg space for the second row. Uh, but, you know, if you don't have that many people back there, uh, you're going to be able to fit a lot, a lot of stuff back in this rear area. Uh, there's no 12 volts or anything like that. Oh, and here's, that's the latch to fold the seat forward, which is not gonna go forward because that seat's really far back. Uh, let's get, no, that's not gonna fold forward either because the seat belt's in the way. Actually it did, that's fascinating. And what I really, really like, Mazda did a really good job here. As you can see, there's no um, in, huge incline where the seat starts, it's nice and flat. So there's not like a ledge like I, uh, in the, 
CRV I was in yesterday. They did a really good job making this a nice flat platform so you can slide fairly large objects in here without getting it stuck on anything. Uh, so nice job Mazda for innovating your seats that, that way and designing it that way. It's very practical. Let's saddle up and get on the road on this 2011 Mazda CX-7. I've always liked the design of these cars. And I'm just a, I'm a pretty large Mazda fan as it is. I used to have that Miata, as my, many of you guys might know. So I, I mention it every once in a while. My video is at a little 91 Mazda MX-5 uh, Miata. Um, <clears throat> but Mazda's always been known for making their SUVs and their crossovers feel very supporty. Uh, and I've been very excited to drive this car with this turbocharged engine which is the same engine they put in like their Mazda Speed 3 uh, which is a really cool hatchback uh, the only downfall of that car is that it's front-wheel drive uh, speaking of front-wheel drive so is this car this particular one does not have all-wheel drive it is available in all-wheel drive but not in the current one that I'm driving this car has a very nice tilt and telescopic steering wheel had a nice feel when I was pushing it in. It was like a nice little resistance. And that lever is located right under the steering wheel column. So we're gonna do a quick little acceleration run here. I'm gonna let this uh, Chevy get in front of me a bit. There's no one behind me. So let's try her out. Let's see what this turbocharged 2.3 liter is all about. Okay. These tires must be bald or something because I was losing traction. I was either losing traction or that's what it felt like because the front end was getting a little bit wishy-washy or the transmission's going or something. Uh, my guess would be that these tires are bald and I'm driving in the rain, which is not a good thing. <coughs> so wish me luck. Um, I'm going to adjust the mirror. The mirror control is on on the door next to uh, the window switches. Road feel. This thing tracks very straight, as you would expect a car with only you know 46,000 miles. It's not the quietest vehicle. Ooh, that is cool. That's a 650i BMW. Uh, pretty cool. The four wheel, the four door version of that car. Anyways, um, I do love the steering wheel feel, and I think. Uh, I used to, you know, follow the MX-5 quite a bit, and they would always, you know, talk about the, how how well that car performed for it being a crossover. And so far, I'm very, very impressed with how the steering wheel—it's tight, but it's not overly uh, aggressive. Now, this the blind spot monitor just went off, and it looks like it's the, about the same exact system we have in our Lexus vehicles. How it has a couple cars staggered. And when a car is in your blind spot, it lights up a bright orange. Visibility in this car is very, very good. Uh, these windows are kind of an odd shape. Most windows that I'm in are usually fairly rounded off. And these, these have like some sharp edges. Um, but I'm, I still have good visibility with them. Um, you know, this car is sneaky quick. Like I was going over 65 and it didn't really feel like it. And this engine wants to party all the time. Um, so I'm going to slow down just a little bit and then get into the throttle to see what, um, you know, passing power would be like with this 2.3 uh, liter turbocharged engine. Three, two, one, and go. Fairly quick downshift. Yeah, the power's good. Holy cow. The power's real good. I went from 60 to 80 uh, and it took a little bit for the power to really kick in, but it was fairly linear and... This car does have a good amount of power. Um, I didn't know what to think. I looked at, I saw 240 horsepower and I'm like, okay, this thing's gonna boogie. Um, but, you know, the weight of this car, I don't know what it is off the top of my head. I'll put it in there for you guys. It does move the mass of this car fairly well. Um, and that's a little bit what I was expecting because Mazda is known. Now, you can get this car with the smaller engine. I'll put those figures up there as well compared to this engine. Uh, if you have the ability to find a used one, obviously they're all going to be used. This is 2018 and these cars uh, stopped production, I think, in 2012. Um, try to find it with a turbocharged engine. It is quite, quite a gem. And I, I 
I would be happy to live with this engine. Uh, let's hit that throttle one more time. Quick downshift, I love this transmission. And it just goes, It's this is perfect power for this car for everyday usage uh, and then some. Um, you know, this a lot that CRV I was in yesterday. Oh, it was it was a chore to kind of ring that car out that inline four. Now this has an inline four as well, but that other one, man, it was naturally aspirated. It did not it did not like moving that car around as much as this engine does. That's for sure. Here we're going to do a quick uh, start stop. Yeah, you guys can hear there's just a, a lot of, there's just a little wheel spin there out of first gear. One, it's the conditions. Two, it's the tires. These tires either must be warm or they could be summer tires. Um, so I will have to look at those when we come to a stop here. Now, I'm not going to, since it is raining, I'm not going to push this car that hard in the, in the twisties. I already told you that the steering feel feels Excellent. It's an A plus for a vehicle um, in this segment, uh, this midsize crossover segment. This steering feels amazing. Uh, we're gonna get into the turn here just a little bit. Uh, losing a tiny bit of traction, but it it holds very very well for an SUV. I'm impressed. I'm impressed by this Mazda. You know, this car kind of feels like the NX a lot like the NX now that I'm thinking about it. So the Lexus NX 300 or 200T has the same same car, uh, just a little bit different year. This car is a little bit bigger than the NX. It has about the same power. Maybe not as much torque, but they both have about 240 horsepower. Um, and they feel very similar. The NX feels a, a little bit more nimbler, hence the N and NX actually stands for nimble. But this car is kind of ahead of its time, whereas the NX debuted in 2014 as a 2015 model. This car came out in 2006, the 2007 model, and it feels very similar in terms of handling and performance uh, as a modern Lexus NX. Now the interior is not nowhere near as polished or sophisticated as an NX. Uh, but this car has really, really held up extraordinarily well um, over the last seven or eight years, especially in this refresh model. I can't speak for the <coughs> the, the original uh, production version of this car. I'm only speaking of this refreshed model, which happened, I believe, in 2010. But I'll, I'll clarify that, of course. Um, but let's go ahead and finish off this review. Let me know what your thoughts are of the 2011 Mazda CX-7. Uh, this thing is going to go down in history as uh, a legend of some sort. You know, it got replaced by the Mazda CX-5, which is a great little vehicle uh, in its own regard. But this thing is special. I like the, the styling on this car a ton. Um, it handles great. It's got great performance from this turbocharged engine. Uh, the transmission was very, very spunky. Uh, downshifts were quick. Uh, handling was great. Steering was great. Um, make sure you have uh, some sticky tires on this thing because you're going to get some uh, some wheel spin out of it. Uh, but it's a great fun little car with some practicality as well. Uh, so if you have a family and you want a little bit of zoom zoom, this is your car.